Hello, thank you, and welcome for coming this afternoon. <laughs> My name is Martha Barnes. Last year, I had the incredible opportunity of winning a competition. I never won anything before. Unless you count the time when I, my mom put my name into a lottery and she won $100 when my name was called. I was so excited. I told all my friends that I was going to get $100 worth of toys. Instead, my mom bought me bedroom furniture. Thank you, Mom, for your wisdom. Who's that? Last year, I had the incredible opportunity of winning a competition, and I did this with the help of my friend, Annie Patterson. I was in a Toastmasters competition, and my competitors had a lot more experience. I'd only been competing talking into a semester for three years, but my competitors had been speaking anywhere from 10 to 15 years. Had I gone on to the next level, I would have been standing on the stage in Chicago at the international competition. I didn't win and I was disappointed, but I learned a lot from the experience. I learned that I like giving short talks. I've always had an appreciation for history. My dad's ancestor, Luther Barnes, served in the Union Army. My mom has told me stories about growing up in the Great Depression. She served in the Navy during World War II, and she was in Hawaii when the Japanese surrendered. There was a party going on that night, and my mom was there. My own appreciation from history comes from growing up in the 1960s and the 70s. I learned from the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, and at the end of that era, the Watergate scandal. It was a tumultuous time, but I learned a lot. When I was bullied in school, I took strength from the stories of African Americans, and they inspired me. When I played outdoors and built tree forts with my friends, I was drawn to stories of Native Americans. I wanted to be just like them. They built their homes in nature, which were a lot better looking than my tree fort. And when I went to uh, the inaugural parade, I saw a peaceful protest against the Vietnam War. I learned from civil disobedience. So today I want to tell you five things that I've learned from history. I'm not a scholar, so there's no need to take notes. Instead, I'm just going to share from my own life experience. The first thing, there's good and bad in the world. Can anybody here, without looking at your phones, try to give me a definition for identity theft? Identity theft, defined by Wikipedia, is the deliberate use of someone else's identity usually as a method to gain a financial advantage or obtain credit or other benefits in the other person's name and perhaps to the other person's disadvantage or loss. It's easy to think that identity theft is an invention of the digital age, but in fact, it's been around thousands of years. Forgery is a way to gain access to someone's financial information. Before picture IDs, all you needed was a signature. The laws against taking someone's identity 
are so old that even ancient Rome had laws against forgery. There's nothing new about evil, but goodness is original and life-changing. Mahatma Gandhi and his followers helped overturn the British government. Did they do it in the old-fashioned way, with guns and knives? No, they did it with civil disobedience, peaceful civil disobedience. When the British government came after them and hurt and killed them, they didn't retaliate with violence. Instead, they kept marching, kept boycotting, kept protesting, and kept organizing until finally the British government gave the Indian people their independence. Years later in America, Dr. Martin Luther King was learning all about this. Dr. King's peaceful demonstrations helped overturn old laws and replaced them with new laws that gave every American their civil rights. You want to do something original and life-changing? Do something good. Never underestimate the abilities of another human being. Albert Einstein, of all people, struggled with math. I guess I'm in good company because I really don't like math. The Wright brothers, two ordinary bicycle repairmen, created the first airplane. And King George VI of England, a socially awkward man with a severe stuttering problem, got help for his disability with a speech therapist. And when his country needed him the most, he addressed them over the radio with eloquence. You just never know what's inside another person. Don't shout the next bit. Watch your mom not to be too loud. We don't want to be people out. As for myself, I have a quite humorous story. When I was a kid, I was a kid that everybody made fun of in school. And it didn't help that my teachers were always on me as far as math and science and my bad handwriting, which I still have problems with today. Who knew, huh? But occasionally, a light would shine. And one of those instances was when I was in sixth grade. With all my shyness, for some reason, I decided to try it for a lead role in the class play, which was A Charlie Brown Christmas. I decided to try out for caustic, obnoxious, loudmouth Lucy Van Pelt. When I got to the audition, I was really nervous because all the popular girls in school were there trying out for the same role. What was I going to do? But when they opened their mouth, I knew something was wrong. This is what they would say. You blockhead, Charlie Brown. <laughs> so when I got up there, I let it rip. You blockhead, Charlie Brown. For the first time in my life, I saw two teachers look at each other as if to say, oh my gosh, Martha Barnes? Yeah, that was me. I got the wrong. And I loved it. Never underestimate someone's ability. There is a value to every human life. I love that commercial from Ancestry, where the young woman talks about her African foremothers and how great and how brave they are, and that's why she is the way she is today. But you know, I got thinking after the commercial was over, what? if your ancestors did some questionable things. Not like you're going to see that on a commercial for ancestry, huh? Yeah, no. But really, what if they did some not-so-good things? Dr. Henry Gates, 
who interview celebrities about their genealogy has said, hereditary, guilt. guilt is not hereditary. It's hard separating yourself from your family and from your history, but it can be done because you are you. You're original. You're not your ancestors. But what if your ancestors were victims of injustice? Where does that leave you? There is a value to every human life, no matter what you've done. There's a value to every human life, no matter what was done to you. You are deeply loved and highly valued by God. And nothing can change your value. Absolutely nothing. I need to remember that when I am hard on myself and when I start to judge other people. Hope. Hope is worth clinging to even if you can't see the results. One of my favorite quotes is from former First Lady Michelle Obama, who said when she was in the White House, Every day I wake up in a house that's built by slaves. I want you to think about something. Construction on the White House began in 1792. 217 years later, Barack Obama became our first African American president. Wow, that was a long time. But we made it, and we've got a lot of work yet to do. But hope doesn't give up. It keeps pushing forward. Some of us today may not see the things that we hope for in our lifetime, but our children might, or maybe the grandchildren. Hope doesn't give up. It keeps pushing forward, even when it can't see the results. Susan B. Anthony, died before women got the right to vote. If she was standing here next to me, she might question me as if to say, wait a minute, women are in Congress and on the Supreme Court? And I'd say, yes, yeah, Susan, they're even running for president. Don't give up. Hope pushes forward. Yes, Between the pages of history, some really sad things, some horrible things like war, violence, greed, genocide, corruption. But inside those stories are stories of faith, people that have gone on and have endured the most despicable things, yet still have faith. Faith not necessarily in the things of the world, even though they fought for those, but and a world beyond here, a world without suffering, without grief, where they would finally find justice. I'm thinking primarily of my African-American brothers and sisters who endured so much, yet still believed. And so today, I'm going to close out with a song and a tribute to everybody who's gone before me, who, despite their situations in life. Believe. It's one thing to believe and see the proof of that belief. And it's another thing to believe and see nothing. These people, I believe with them. They have encouraged my own faith. So today I want to close with this song. Swing low, sweet chariot coming for to carry me home swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry me home when I looked over Jordan 
and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me. Coming for to carry me home If you get there before I do Coming for to carry me home Tell all my friends I'm coming too Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home